Hi, I'm Courtney Nash. I'm an editor for O'Reilly, and I'm here today with David Wolber, who's a professor at the University of San Francisco in computer science. That's right. And you've also been doing some work with Google on App Inventor. Yeah, writing tutorials, that sort of thing. All right, cool. So today we're going to be building some apps around texting. Yep. Pretty common phone activity. Sure. I use it all the time. No idea how it works. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little unsure about this. We're going we're gonna to actually program something to do with texting, and I have no clue how that happens. Yeah, we're actually going to kind of auto-respond to text, mm -hmm. and, and we're going to use some cool features. We're going to use like text-to-speech, where the, the text actually gets spoken. Right. Okay, we're going to actually send and read text the okay. app is going to. All right. And we're going to use a location sensor, GPS, so we know where the phone is. We can add that information in. All right. So there's going to be some concepts in there, some programming. I, I still don't feel like I know how to do that. Well, the nice thing is, is the Google engineers have done a lot of work on the App Inventor team. All right. And they've built these high-level components where pretty simply you can, like this is kind of a Hello World app. Really? Yeah, you know, it's a little complicated. It doesn't sound like it. <laughs> but it, it, it can be done at like almost the first day or first week that you start with App Inventor. It's All pretty, right. pretty amazing. All right, well, let's get started. have some object and if you, you were keeping score you could just make it get wider as the score got higher uh -huh. that, that okay. sort of thing. All right. Um, I also noticed that if you've got something here you don't want it's you just drag it over stick here. Stick it in this little garbage it. can yeah and, and, and make sure it. you do that because you don't want to leave any floaters around. Yeah so floaters will cause problems. Floaters will I, I think floaters don't cause as many problems as they used to but with the new version things are things are pretty good. Okay. Um, but yeah get rid of floaters. No floaters. Yeah. Okay um, so right now the way we have it this is going to change the response based on what they type. And then, of course, if a text then comes in after that, mm -hmm. it will send, uh, right now, it's going to send a fixed piece of right, text. Right, so we need to connect we gotta, these guys. We've got to garbage this guy out. OK. Right, so this was a, a fixed text we, we were sending. And now we want to make it from a variable, basically. dynamic okay. from the variable. So I'm going to get rid of him. And once this guy's been changed, that's what we want to send back to whoever right. sends the text. So I'm going to grab custom response label, and not his set, but just the one to access his information. Okay. So this text property, and voila, we're we're done. This, that's cool. Yeah. So now whatever the user types in here, that's what's going to get sent back to the the person that sent the text. Yeah, and so I mean it's just it, to me it's just a nice interface, but you still it doesn't do everything for you. You've no. got to keep track of the logic you're setting up, you know. So there's definitely some you're learning some good programming concepts here. Regardless. Yeah, th this is and, and you know, you can do any kind of programming that you can do with the regular language. There's there's the same kind of constructs. Right. Um, there's the same abstraction, right? I mean, when we have a fixed piece of text in there, it's it's very concrete, very yeah. understandable. And then when you take it to the next level and you're dealing with variables, it's a little more abstract. But the nice thing is you don't have to, you don't get caught up in the syntax of things, mm -hmm. like forgetting a semicolon or something like that that right. just kills people when they're learning programming. Cool. Uh, so can we, can we see this now? Is it ready to go? Yeah. Let's, so here's the app now with the with the updated interface, and mm -hmm. and the user can just you know, touch there and and start typing. Right. And I'm just going to be very brief. So you do this when you're you're about to get in the car, set your your you're custom sure, not, message. Not while you're driving, right, and, right. And, and you might only do it do it once, you yeah. know, and and so you get your custom thing in there. Cool. Okay, so you've changed the message. So if I text you now again, um, and I say testing again, then I should get what what did you put in for your custom message? I just said driving. Very very <laughs> concise. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, a very concise message. You should get back. Okay. And um, so while I'm waiting for this to come back to me, what I'm wondering about is um, when you know, you've got this saved in your app, and if I close this app, yes. right, so I'm done at the end of the day, yes. I've driven home, going home, and I close the app, and I go inside, what, what happens? Yeah, when you close the app, you're going to lose your custom, me well, there's your custom message. There it is, driving. it says it's driving. Yeah. So, so when I close my app, that custom message stays? That data's gone. And, and the reason is we've only programmed it to kind of store that data temporarily. Okay. And, and what we need to do is program it to store it in a database. All right. And App Inventor makes that real easy. Cool. So I'll show you how to do that. Great. 